Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. We're back for part four of working on my very first bonsai tree, my ficus microcarpa that I grew from a seed. In part three of this series, I pruned up all the lower branches on the tree and I only have the apex left to go. First, let's have a look at the scale of the tree. Here's a look at my tree with my supermodel standing beside it. It kind of gives the tree a bit of a sense of scale. And that's what I like to do with trees is I look at the tree and I kind of imagine, well, how big would a person be if they were standing beside the tree? And it really gives you a sense of scale. And I think a really good tree, a quality tree, you get that sense of scale that you can picture an animal beside the tree or a person beside the tree. You really get a good tree, I think, a quality tree. You really get a nice sense of scale to the entire planting. Here's a look at the tree with an elephant beside it. And this changes the whole scale of the tree because the elephant, you know, is more miniaturized. It's a smaller scale, so it makes the tree look even larger. Here's a shot of the tree with a zebra beside it. So with the zebra there, the tree looks even larger, I think. Uh, yeah, it starts to look like a giant tree. If you display the tree without any figurines or anything that force a sense of scale, then it's up to the tree to evoke a sense of scale. And that's in the details of the tree. You know, how accurately you have depicted a large tree. So you've got to get all those details of a large tree into a small tree, and that's what makes it look giant. In order to get the umbrella-shaped canopy, I'll have to follow my profile and prune a lot of the height off the tree. It's also very complex in the center structure. It looks like a really dense hedge or something. So I talked about branches, you know, starting off simple, getting more and more complex with the ramification and more and more branching as you get out towards the tips. So the branch starts off thick and it gets finer and finer towards the outer edge of the canopy. So I'll keep that in mind when I'm pruning up this top part of the tree today. Here's a close-up look at the apex of this tree. And some people might say, what a mess, you've got branches going everywhere. But that's typical of a ficus tree. They have branches that snake through everywhere and twist and turn, and there's no formal structure to a ficus. I'm looking at the tree from the front. And if you follow, you know, from the outer edge of the branches here, you kind of follow an umbrella shape you can see that it kind of, the top of my apex would be somewhere about here. So that's what I'll have to do. I'll have to prune all that back and then it's still too complex. So I'll have to do some thinning. I don't want all the vigor of the tree coming up to the apex. I want the vigor evenly distributed amongst all the branches. So it all grows out kind of evenly. I'm going to start with a profile pruning of the upper apex of the tree. There's no point having branches sticking out outside of that umbrella profile unless there's a particular branch I want to thicken up. So I would let the branch grow, gain vigor, and then prune it back later. But I think, you know, if anything, I've got some thick branches here that might need pruning back harder. But everything in this general area looks good. It's a nice vigor. It's a nice thickness. They're not too not too thick, not too thin. They're just, just about right. So I think a profile pruning will cover about 90% uh, of the pruning work, maybe maybe 80%. So here I go. I'm going to pick the highest point in the apex of my tree. So again, I'm kind of placing my hand over, creating an umbrella shape and getting the height of my tree. So it's going to be somewhere about here. So I'll start the pruning. And again, I'm using directional pruning. So everything fans out from the center of the tree. Wherever I can. And I'm sure there'll be lots of Hail Mary type cuts in this. Pruning back to areas on the branch that had no foliage, looking for leaf scars. So hopefully I can determine the direction of the new growth. And remember, 
This is the height of my apex, but everything's curving. So the branches towards the front will get shorter. The branches towards the rear will get shorter, creating that umbrella shaped canopy. It's always hard pruning off ramification, but it's just something you have to do to get that nice taper to your branches. Nice directions to your branches. So I'm pruning a little, a little higher at first and then I'll refine it. I'll bring it down even further to kind of really refine that umbrella shape. I could come in with shears and just prune the shape initially. I've done that, you know, you just get the long scissors out and you cut the umbrella shape and then you go in and refine all the branch structure. So back here, I'm getting into some hard pruning. You know, there's a lot of branching up here. This branch comes up, divides into two and then into three and two or three up here. So all that has to come off because it's just too high. It's outside of the profile of my umbrella canopy. So, so some hard pruning. But when you do prune, you know, a thicker branch like this, they generally back bud really well and you get a lot of new growth come out, especially on a ficus microcarpa like this. They, they back bud very nicely. They're very consistent in their, the way they bud. So there's a thick branch off. Yeah, doing some heavy duty pruning up in the apex here. So some of these Hail Mary cuts, you know, it's, you can't exactly predict where the new leaves are going to come out on them. And that's part of the charm is that, you know, getting that natural look that if everything was according to mathematical precision and, you know, you pruned everything exactly how you planned and you wanted this branch to come here and everything worked out perfectly, I think you would get a tree that doesn't look natural. So letting the tree kind of do its own thing sometimes or surprises can be a really good thing on a tree. Now here's a case I think I've got to replace an entire branch up here. It's too thick and vigorous and I can prune it back lower and it's out of the profile of the canopy. So I'm going to take the entire top off there. Losing, you know, ramification but gaining taper in the branches and movement in the branch too. So you sacrifice in some areas, you know, ramification in that, but you gain in other areas. You gain in taper and movement. Simplifying, reducing. In part two, I'd left this branch quite long, but now it definitely, I can see it needs pruning back. So I will have to do that. I'll have to do some hard pruning. So right here and right back to here. Like that. That gets that in check. If I were to do this to a ficus benjamina, probably 50% of the branches would die off. They don't like hard pruning. But these ficus microcarpas, they can, they love it. They, uh, they back bud. You hardly ever lose a branch from pruning. So they're a great tree for bonsai. And I like aerial roots and banyan style trees. So they're just perfect for me. It is looking much better. There's a lot of stuff I have to sort out. There's a lot of crossing branches and a lot of strange stuff going on. And I'm not against strange stuff, but uh, it's got to look kind of nice too. It's, you know, bonsai is a mix between nature and man. And uh, I get 50% of the say, and the tree gets 50%. Maybe it's not a 50-50 relationship. Maybe it's more 80% me and 20% the tree, or I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's 60% the tree and 40% me, something like that. But the tree definitely wants to do its own thing. So I've got, I've got a fairly vigorous branch here that I'm going to do some hard pruning on. It's got to stay in the profile and there's no branches coming off it. So I'm going right here and I'm going to go right to here. Like that. So just watching my profile, 
seeing where I can prune branches. If there's a good place to prune the branch, I use it. But if there's nothing, I have to do these Hail Mary cuts. And I'm doing lots of them today. So up the back here, I always just had the one apex. I'll show you a close up of that. Here's a close up of the apex and you can see this used to be the only apex and it kind of goes to my right hand side a bit. So over this way. And I always felt it needed something to kind of counterbalance that out here. So I left this little shoot grow and it gained a lot of vigor because I was trying to kind of catch it up to the thickness of this main one. And then it developed this big aerial root coming down and it started thickening up even more. So, um, so now it's got all kinds of vigor and you can see how high it is. It needs pruning back. But I do like having that sort of secondary trunk, you know, in this position to counterbalance the, the original one. Yeah, so some hard pruning in that area. I'm going to have to cut it back quite hard. So last time I pruned it was up here and I pruned it above that aerial root because I wanted to keep that aerial root. So now I can chop it back hard again to about here and that'll get some branching down lower and help fill out the apex on this side. So here I go, some hard pruning on that section. Yeah. Um, and there's no branching, you know, there's a long straight section. It has a slight curve here but there's no branches coming off that I can prune it back to. So it's a big Hail Mary cut. There is a, there is a bud back here though. That's good. But I want something coming out this direction, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. I'll uh, prune it off and so here I go right here. A nice cutting. I think I'll plant that one also. So I'll have three cuttings now from this tree. All right, that's got that reduced back. There's still, I've still got a lot of branches to prune to the profile. So I will keep going. And you can look from the side view to get your curves. Remember to get that umbrella shape in all directions. I left a lot of branches long here from yesterday. They're out of the profile, so they've got to be pruned back. Yes, indeed. So here I go. Just keeping in mind the profile. It's getting there. If you look at the front view now, I'm out front now having a look at the tree. So the profile is getting there. It, you know, needs a little tweaking in some areas, but uh, Again, you don't want it a perfect umbrella. Some variation is fine. Um, it is very dense up in the canopy here. Very dense. So I think it needs a little bit of thinning up there just to kind of equalize out the branch density. I don't think it, it'll take a whole lot, but it, it needs some. There's also some cleanup work I can do in the apex, cleaning up some of the previous cuts, just making them a little more flush so they heal over nicely. Yeah, so let's go up to the apex and continue working on that. I've got a little shoot that's sticking up between the main two trunks and the apex. I don't want a third shoot coming up there or a third branch, so I'm going to remove that. I have a wound where I pruned this thick major branch before. I'm going to clean that up. I like to do a lot of my pruning of the apex from above. So this is the front of the tree. Let's go right above it so you can get a bird's eye view of the structure so you can see most of it fans out it's a little fuller at the back here a little sparser at the front but uh it's not bad so i'm going to make sure all these branches are kind of going fairly radial i don't want you know any crossing across the trunk or anything like that or the apex I don't want any growing in towards the center of the tree. I want them all kind of gracefully fanning out. And, you know, I'll keep ones that aren't exactly perfect. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to prune away branches with cool character to them.
but yeah, there's a, a top view of the tree. It's always nice, I think, to look at trees from the top. Uh, you can see, you know, there's some branches here. Looking in the top view, I'll prune those back shorter to keep my oval shape. And, you know, most trees grow in an oval shape when viewed from above. And that's because usually the sun rises in the east. Well, always it does. It rises in the east, so this tree gets a lot of light coming in low. And the sun rises and goes across the sky over the top of the canopy and sets in the west over here. So the front face of the tree, which is either north or south, doesn't get much uh, light, not much side light in the morning. And uh, that's why trees grow in an oval shape because they get the sun longer on each side, east and west and north and south. They don't get that side light. They only get the direct light coming from above. So that's the reason that most trees grow in an oval shape. And you'll also find that's maybe the reason that bonsai pots are traditionally in oval shape. You know, the root spread is usually wider east and west than it is north and south because there's more branches east and west. So, yeah, that may explain, you know, the aesthetics of the oval shaped bonsai pot, why it is that shape. While I've got the tree on the floor here, I will look from above and I'll tidy up that oval shape, that perimeter shape uh, to get it a nice oval and again it doesn't have to be perfect but generally it should be it should be there you don't want your tree when viewed from above looking really untidy you know one section sticking way out other sections not and yeah generally you know a tree as it grows it's not totally regular but they're fairly regular they they do grow fairly evenly, especially a really large tree. You don't see them wildly going outside of that umbrella shape. From the top view, I'm also looking for crisscrossing branches, trying to give each branch its own spot of sunlight, you know, when viewed from above. So, a, you know, a general cleanup looking down from the top. So that will do from the pruning from above. I've taken out a lot of crossing branches. I've got my oval shape profile in check um, everything's looking pretty good from above and i didn't i didn't prune it back too much i left a lot of branches that are does it look good in that position well it's not too bad i didn't prune everything perfect so it's not mathematical precision no overlapping branches at all there's still some randomness to it and some naturalness to it so i think it's just right i'm looking at the tree from the front now it's always kind of scary, you know, if you're pruning in the top view to that oval profile and then you come down to the front view and you hope the tree still looks good. And it does. It's uh, quite nice still. So, yeah, it's good to prune in all different views. You know, look down from the top, prune, look at the front, prune. You can look at the side view and prune your canopy. Yeah, you need to look at the tree from all angles to get a really good 360 degree you know, prune of the tree. My final work in the canopy will be doing a bit of thinning. Remember I said, you know, the branches have to start off thick at the base and slowly taper to the fine branching at the tips. So I'm going in and anything that's, you know, going fairly thick right to the profile, I'll prune it back further so then it can develop more branching and I'll eventually get really fine twigging or branching out of the very outside profile of the tree. You don't want thick, heavy branches, even though they're pruned to a profile, you don't want the thick, heavy branches going right to the edge of the canopy. So you want to prune the heavier branches back even shorter, allowing for that new growth to come in and fill out the canopy. Branches like these fine ones out front, they're fine. They come up, you know, fairly thick at the base and they taper and they're very fine at the outer profile of the canopy. But some of the ones at the back are a little thick, so they have to be pruned back harder. Here's an example of some branches that are fairly thick and they go right to the edge of the canopy profile. So I need to prune those back a bit so I get finer twigging towards that edge of the profile. So I'll take this one back to here. And this one back to here. Like that. I'll do the final touches to the shaping of the canopy and then we'll come back and have a look at it.
I finished up with the pruning. I I'm happy with the tree. I'm going to spin it around so you can see it from all angles. So here I go. So front view coming around to the right side. Coming around to the back. Over to the left side. And coming back to the front. There we go. In the next video, I'll be repotting the tree, raking out all the roots, root pruning it, getting it into new bone size soil. So that'll be really exciting. I, I love doing root work. So that's it for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bone Size Zone.